Hi YouTube, it's John Ailey here. In this video, I'm gonna be helping out my cousin Dewey who is expecting a baby on the way. So congratulations and shout out to my cousin um, because he reached out and said that he's thinking ahead about trying to get ready to save for college for the baby. And he wanted to know if I had videos about saving for college and I don't currently, so I decided to put this one out. So this video is gonna be centered around a 529 college savings plan and like what you need to know and um, the important things about it. Uh, but if you have similar question or question about really anything related to personal finance that you want me to cover on the channel you can give me a call leave me a message and then I will post a video response to your question and the number you can call is 774-231-8522 I'm really like trying to get more voices from the people that watch my videos and support my channel on here so that we can kind of have more of a sense of community so I'm really excited to have that call number up there please use it if you have any kind of questions so I'm gonna jump right into 529 college savings plan there are some really important things you need to understand about it. Um, but the first thing people want to know is why? Why would I use a 529 college savings plan at all? Like, why can't I just put the money in the bank or put the money in a general taxable investing account? Why do I have to use a specific 529 college savings plan? And that's a great question. So the basic reason is that whenever you're saving for a very specific thing that the government incentivizes you to save for, retirement, health, uh, college, then you might want to consider using the specific type of investment account for that thing because it allows you to save a lot of money on taxes. So with a 529 college savings plan, you would be putting money in and contributing money as you know much as you want, as much as you can throughout the months and years of the account existing before the child goes to college. And then that money is going to be compounding. It's going to be growing with the you know performance of the stock market. And if the money goes up a lot and you have a lot of profit, Profit, which is the goal and the hope for anybody investing long term, then what happens is you can use all of that profit that you made in the stock market to pay for college or college related expenses without having to pay taxes on that money. That is a huge deal because taxes are pretty high for most people, you know, in the 20%, 15, 20% bracket. If you have the opportunity through the government to legally not have to pay taxes on that income and use it for something that you know you're gonna get anyway, like college for your kids, then this is definitely something you might want to consider taking advantage of. It's the same reason why people put money in their 401k instead of just investing by themselves because the 401k is pre-tax and so you have a lot of tax benefits. Um, Roth IRA, same thing, like you put the money in but then when you go to take it out, you don't have to pay taxes on the profit. So all these ideas of like not having to pay taxes, it's a big deal. So again, if you have, you kind of know that you have um, that trajectory, that path in mind for your children or your family members that are young than you, then a 529 college savings plan might be a thing to consider, especially if you know you know that you have a long time before the children and the little ones in your life are going to go to college. That gives you a longer time to save and to invest and to benefit from growth that could potentially come from investing in the stock market long term. Now moving into um, how, how exactly does it work? Well, it's just like investing in, a, in anything with the stock market. You're going to create an account, then you're going to decide what specifically is going to be in that account. What investments are are you going to put in there? Are you going to have stocks? Are you going to have bonds? Are you going to have a mix of both stocks and bonds? And then once you kind of figure out how you want to, um, how you want, what investments you want to be in that account, you will link the account to your debit, uh, you know, your uh, checking account, and then you start contributing money from your bank account into that account, and then that money gets invested according to the plan that you chose. So that talks about why, that talks about how. So now let's get into what exactly you should do if you are interested in getting a 529 college savings plan. So this kind of depends on I would say the age of the child. If you have a very young child, like a baby, you're definitely gonna wanna take advantage of the fact that you have many, many years, like a decade or more of time before that baby is gonna be of college age, you know, 18 or 17 or 18. So basically you, you because you have so many years, you're gonna want to take advantage of that time and you can afford to be more aggressive. So you can be, um, you know, you can do a lot, a lot of stocks and not a lot of bonds or all stocks. Like that's the most aggressive way that you could invest. And then as the child gets older and older, the closer they are to being, you know, a teenager who's about to go off to college, 
the, the more you want to start to pull back and start to be a little bit more conservative. You don't want to have that all that money in stocks because stocks are very risky. It, the stock market is very volatile. It goes up and down all the time. Nobody can predict what's going to happen. And sometimes you make a lot, but sometimes you can lose a lot. So you don't really want your money to be all at risk like that. So you want to start to balance your portfolio out and start to say, okay, I'm going to have less stocks as my child or as the little one gets older, the closer they are to 18, I'm going to start putting more bonds in there and start making it a little bit more secure and more safe and less risky and less volatile. So um, that is basically the general um, idea, right? And so when you go ahead and shop around for 529 savings plans, you're going to want to compare and contrast the different programs and the different plans available. Almost, I think every state offers a 529 savings plan that they sponsor. And some of them give you an incentive for using their account if you live in that specific state. So for example, if you live in New York, there's incentives for you to use the New York savings plan versus Ohio or Florida savings plan. And if your state doesn't really offer you any special incentives for using the 529 plan for your state, then feel free to like just shop around and look for a better one or for the one that you think is best for you. You don't have to use the one for your state. So um, I'm going to use the example of New York because that's where I'm from and this is easy. And also I just happen to know that my cousin Dewey is in New York. So this is video specifically targeting him. What I would recommend is if you want to compare the plan for your state, so if I wanted to compare the New York plan to other plans, I would go to savingforcollege.com. If you go to savingforcollege.com, that website allows you to answer a couple questions in the quiz and then get a recommended list of the best plans that rec that they recommend for you based on how much you can save. Um, how, you know, if you file your taxes as married, joint, separate, single, all these things that you put in the quiz at the beginning are going to impact which specific plan they recommend for you. Let's say you did that and it led you to the one from New York anyway, then you would go straight to the New York uh, website. You could click the link. It'll take you to the New York 529 college savings plan. And then you could go through the steps to create an account. So set up your name, your date of birth, all that stuff. The account for a 529 college savings plan is going to be in the parent's name. And you actually want, even if you put the child as the beneficiary, which you will, it will still be in the parent's name because the parent is the one that is contributing to save money for the child to go to college. You want to not put it in a grandparent's name or in the in the, in the um, anybody really else's name because that hurts you more because the way that financial aid office um, offices in different colleges consider the money that is in a 529 plan is different depending on who is whose name it's in. So if it's in your parent's name it's going to be much better for you. The, the government's still going to give you a lot more financial aid versus if it was in a grandparent's name or if the child had it in their own investment account, like a Roth IRA or a savings account or something like that. Well, actually, a Roth IRA does not affect your financial aid. That's not true. Basically, if you have your child's money in a savings account with their name on it, say you have like $10,000 in a savings account um, with their name on it, when you apply to college, the financial aid office is going to offset how much financial aid they were going to give to you. The impact is going to be about 20% of the amount that you have saved up. So, you know, you wouldn't really get as much financial aid because 20% is gonna be affected. The financial aid office is gonna affect that decision by 20%. Versus if it's in a 529 college savings plan, the financial aid office decision is only gonna be impacted by 5%. So you definitely want it to be in a 529 college savings plan in the parent's name and not the grandparent's name or in a bank account in your child's name. Now that you kind of get that out of the way, let's say you go through the steps in the New York um, account you put your name, you put the, all that information. For my cousin specifically, his baby is not born yet. So this is going to be hard because it's going to ask you for the child's name and social security number and date of birth. So what I recommend if you want to just try this out first before the baby arrives, just go through the steps and create a fake account. Like create, put the fake birthday, put a fake social security number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. But the point is to just go through the process and pretend to do this so that you can get to the steps that are going to be the tricky steps. The tricky steps are when they ask you to decide decide how you're going to invest the money. So after you put in all the name, date of birth, all the social security number, it's going to say, pick one of these two ways to invest for your child. You can choose a 
age-based investment account, which is going to go and change the amount of stocks and amount of bonds and kind of make it um, what's appropriate for the child based on the child's age. And they will automatically change it every you know five years or whatever time goes by. It's going to change the, the way that you invest the money to make it more and more conservative the closer your child gets to college age. If you don't really feel comfortable with that because, let's be real, you don't have a lot of control over that and they're going to automatically do it. If you want to have your hand in it more, if you want to have more control and you want to design your own custom plan, then don't pick the age-based automatic one choose the customizable investment plan. And when you click that one, it'll give you a lot of different options. This is where it gets tricky because it lists a bunch of titles and a lot of people get confused about what they mean. So for example, it'll say aggressive growth fund. That means that you're going to have a lot of pretty much 100% stocks in there because it says aggressive growth. And in order to chase after aggressive growth, you're going to have to have a lot of stocks. And so that one specifically for New York, I know it's 73% of the money goes into Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. And then 30% of it goes towards the Vanguard uh, Total International Market Stock Market. So that's you know 70% of American stocks and 30% of international stocks. That is still 100% stock. So if you do that aggressive growth fund, you have to make sure that you have a lot of time before your child's going to go off to college. You want 10 years or more for that money to grow. But then you're going to have to remember that you have to go in when that child is 10, 11, you know, maybe 12 to 15, and you're going to have to change it so that it's not all at risk. So all the money is not being so aggressive. You're going to want to have like, you know, 70% stocks, 30% bonds. So you're going to have to go in and maybe change it from aggressive growth stock fun to instead of aggressive just growth stock fun not so aggressive and then maybe once your child is like over 15 and super close to going to college maybe you change it to conservative growth fund right because you don't want to be so risky when your child is about to go to college if you're confused about any of the titles that are listed you can always click the little um information button next to the the title of the fund and see what exactly is in there. It'll tell you 70% is in Vanguard Total Stock Market, which is VTSEX, or it'll tell you um, the name of the fund that the money's going to. If you're not sure what that fund is, copy and paste the name of it into Google and just find out what companies are in there. You know, what exactly, what exactly does that fund mean? Because if you're not comfortable, if you're not sure of something, you know, you shouldn't really do it unless you at least understand the basics of it. Be careful not to overfund. Don't go in there, put like, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a year or something. There's two reasons why you don't want to do that. One is because if the child decides not to go to college, you're going to pretty much have money in there that you said you were going to use for college. And then if you choose not to use it for college, then the government is going to charge you income tax on that money and a penalty for not using it for the right reasons. So you're going to really get hit hard with taxes, even more taxes than you normally would because you didn't use the money for college. So you don't want um, that to happen. And then the second reason you don't want to overfund the account is not just because if your child chooses not to go to college, but specifically because you can only use that money for college. So if your child does decide to go to college, but college only ends up costing them like, you know, 60 or $50,000 and you had $100,000 in there, then you're going to have all this extra money and you know you do have some choices but it's still kind of annoying you can give that money to a little brother or a little sister or a little cousin you know just transfer that account to another child so that you can help a little cousin or a little brother or sister go to college um, if you don't know anybody of course then the, the last resort is to take the money out use it for whatever and then you pay income taxes and penalty tax on that money so that is kind of like the worst case scenario. The last thing I want to know is that there is a catch because of course, as with most things, the government kind of makes the detailed decisions for you. They have a list of qualified college expenses. And if the thing that you think is a college expense is not listed on there, then it's not a college expense. Most times listed on there is tuition, room and board, meal plan, books, laptop, all that kind of stuff. But let's say you want to buy an airplane ticket to get back home and travel to and from, you know, your college state is not listed as a qualified college expense. It might change, but like for right now, let's say if it's not, then you have to use your own money 
to pay for that and you can't take the money out of the 529 for that thing because it's not listed as a qualified college expense. So what I recommend you do is just take a look at what the qualified college expenses are. Google, you know, what are the 529 college savings plan qualified education related expenses? That's a long thing to Google, but like whatever, start Googling it and then it'll come up as a suggested. Like, let's be real. Other people are out here Googling this stuff. But yeah, so just type that into Google and then you'll see what the list that the IRS provides you with, which is qualified education expenses. And if you realize it's not making you happy because it's like, meh, that might help you, you know, decide how much to put into the 529. It is really important to under to like get into this stuff because it can be complicated when you try to look it up. And it's, you know, if you can understand the basics of it, it's not, not not ever actually as complicated as it might seem when you have somebody explain it so love putting these videos out there um, again a quick reminder if you want to reach out to me you can do that either via email misbehelpful at gmail.com or by calling me and leave me a message at 774-231-8522 follow me on social media i'm on facebook i'm on twitter i'm on instagram connect with me there i love to post a little bit more personal stuff there and more educational stuff here um and that's pretty much all i have i'm trying to post videos every single week so come back and check me out my videos are here to hopefully help you get your money right and help you change your life for the better um that's all i have for you guys so till next time peace